Sponsored by Midland. Communication for every adventure. The industry leader in radio communication technology and innovation for over 50 years. Sponsored by MyMedic. First aid kits that will actually save your life, not just band-aids and gauze. Always remember, the opinion you follow should be your own. Just consider the things stated here to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Hi, my name is Phil from Waypoint Overland, and you're listening to Random Waypoints. All right, so here we go. Welcome to another episode of the Random Waypoints podcast. We'll be doing an episode every week, so like, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to make sure you don't miss an episode. This week, we do a rig walk around of what I think is the perfect example of built, not bought. So stay tuned for the whole show. But first, let's look at the news. During this segment, we'll cover various topics with a connection to overlanding in some way. It could be land use news regarding the national parks or the Bureau of Land Management. We'll keep you up to date on any auto industry news when it pertains to relevant and potential overlanding vehicles. There will be camping and outdoor industry news, as well as photography and video, fishing, hiking, and on and on. Now, here's the news. A first of its kind, Ford Bronco Off-Rodeo School near Austin, Texas, is set to open June 28th. Initial registration is open only to Bronco Sport Badlands and First Edition owners. Order holders awaiting the arrival of their Bronco 2 or four-door SUV can get behind the wheel of a Bronco before taking delivery of their vehicle and will also receive a $250 voucher to use toward gear from the Bronco Off-Rodeo or to apply to the cost of bringing a guest with them or toward optional adventure experiences. Owners will be able to receive complimentary instruction on how to take their SUV off-road. Each Bronco off-rodeo experience will put Bronco brand drivers to the test across 50 miles of curated trails over a day and a half, while teaching them about the capabilities and performance of their all-new vehicle. Three more off-rodeo adventure parks are due to open later this year in Nevada, Moab, Utah, and the Northeast United States. Lindsay Laporte, Bronco Experience Manager, stated, Bronco is more than a vehicle. It's an outdoor brand, and the Bronco Off-Rodeo will help bring it to life. It's an immersive experience, and Bronco owners will come away with a greater level of off-road skills and a more thorough understanding of Bronco capability, all while being introduced to the Bronco Nation community. Each location offers courses expertly designed and curated with the assistance of legendary names in off-roading. The four locations are designed to challenge attendees with hardcore desert running, rock crawling, and trail riding. Horseshoe Bay features stunning sunsets and rugged ranches where wild broncos run free. Geared for off-road novices and experts alike, the program starts with a 90-minute hands-on tutorial designed to educate owners on features such as trail control and terrain management systems. Tutorials are led by trail guides who will highlight design and technology features helping Bronco owners learn to better navigate off-road courses and explore rugged trails. The experience covers trail etiquette and recovery techniques, including how to equip and use gear, like highlighting their vehicle's capability. Through special curated adventure extensions, Bronco owners can purchase added outdoor activities, such as half-day kayaking, fly fishing, whitewater rafting, or a mountain biking excursion. Days end around a campfire where attendees can share their experiences. Bronco and Bronco sport owner can leave their vehicles at home when they visit a Bronco off-rodeo location, instead driving a model provided that's similar to their own. Attendees are responsible for transportation to and from the experience, as well as overnight accommodations. Friends and family members can join for a fee, as can non-Bronco owners. Each Bronco off-rodeo location offers stay-and-play packages with area hotels or resorts, such as Horseshoe Bay Resort, a premier lakeside golf resort near the Texas venue. At this award-winning facility, families can enjoy watercraft rentals, dining at seven on-property outlets, three championship golf courses, 
two resort-style pools, and daily resort activities. Details on the other three locations will be made available closer to each park's opening later this summer and early fall. To learn more about Bronco Off-Rodeo, go to broncooffrodeo.com. California electric vehicle startup Canoe has finally announced pricing for the electric van it announced back in 2019. The lifestyle van, as Canoe calls it, will start at $34,750 and cost as much as $49,950 for the most capable model. That's before additional equipment or tax incentives are applied. Canoe Incorporated has opened its reservations and it's taking pre-orders. The lifestyle vehicle can be reserved in the United States with a $100 deposit per vehicle at Canoe.com. The lifestyle vehicle will be the first vehicle to market in 2022. Tony Aquila, CEO and Executive Chairman, Canoe Incorporated, stated, It's no longer a question of whether America will go EV, but when. Our lineup is future forward and succeeds where others have struggled. Giving people the EV that works smarter for them at a price that can work for their budgets. That's why we're designing for flexible use cases and focused on productivity solutions. We are designing for people who work hard, play hard, and need something reliable that will last and give you value. We're for the 99%, not the 1%. Our vehicle lineup is built for the backbone of America to give you value so you can work smarter. A Yellowstone National Park ranger averted potential tragedy by firing rubber bullets and cracker shells to stop a grizzly that charged onlookers who failed to maintain a safe distance from the bear. When the grizzly bear bounded out of the woods and rose up to its hind legs to look around at the people, the ranger darted back to his truck, pulled a shotgun, shouted at the bear, and fired a few rounds in its direction to get the bear to reverse course and head back into the woods. The incident came the same day that a lone hiker was attacked by another grizzly on the Beaver Ponds Trail near Mammoth Hot Springs. Yellowstone Superintendent Cam Sholly stated, We've already seen numerous close calls with bears this year and had one visitor seriously injured last week. Visitors need to maintain appropriate distance to wildlife and understand these animals are wild and can kill or injure humans very easily if threatened. Park regulations call for visitors to remain at least 100 yards away from the bears, but in this case somewhere within 20 yards, according to park staff. Now it's time for our built, not bought, rig walk around. Let's watch. I've received a lot of messages asking about rig walk arounds, and specifically rigs that are built, not bought. I totally get that. I often see overlanders with brand new trucks and a wish list of equipment installed. And I drool just like everyone else. But I also get the sense most of them are only into the gear and not overlanding. Today, I want to introduce you to someone who you'll admire not for all the bells and whistles he has installed on his rig, but for the simplicity of his build. All the needed things for an epic trip and nothing else. His rig is the perfect example of built not bought. I'm honored to introduce Neil Hall and his Toyota 4Runner Overland build. Welcome to the show, Neil. Hey, Phil. Thanks for having me. We're here today in the Pacific Northwest on the Washington Backcountry Discovery Route. We're here to take a look at my 1997 Toyota 4Runner, some of the things I've done to it since I've got it. Let's get started. All right, let's get started with the front of the rig since it's right here. I painted the bumper, I painted the grill. It's something you can do in your driveway at home. I try to do things as much as I can at home on a budget instead of paying someone else to do it. Lighting, these are just work lights for around camp. I'm trying them out here out front. I want them on an Instagram giveaway. They're gonna work in a pinch when I'm driving slow down a road in the dark. I think they are gonna come in handy. Some of the other stuff I've made, as you're going to soon see, is my limb risers over here. They're made out of just some, uh, some brackets I had laying around in the garage, as well as uh, some paracord mounted up to uh, my rack up top. It's nothing fancy. A lot of people use cable. I had 
this paracord and it works great. Um, next thing we probably want to get on to is my lift. Tires, probably the most important thing on a rig in my opinion. Mine are uh, BF Goodrich KM3s. They're a great tire. I wouldn't say that they're the best by any means. There's a lot of good stuff out there, but they work really well for me. The lift I have on here is an Old Man Emu lift. It's about two and a half, three inches. Uh, it doesn't have any settings or adjustments at all. It is what it is once they put it in there. Here I've got some uh, rock sliders. They're kind of the next thing you want to get after tires and lifts, some say, uh, for protection. You don't want to smash up your doors when there's an unexpected rock or whatever that jumps out in front of you. It's really good protection. Moving on up to the, uh, the rack up here, I've got uh, my shovels, recovery boards, my tent, and a cargo carrier. I put stuff like my sleeping bag, sleeping stuff in there, any other gear I don't get to that often. The rack is uh, half homemade, half store-bought. It's kind of just grown as I've needed. But let's move on to the back and check out what's going on back there. Here at the back, I've got my, uh, my tire and trash carrier back here. This is probably one of my most critical pieces of equipment on my rig because I always try to leave wherever I go better than when I found it. That means just cleaning up a campfire, picking up some trash if you can, just doing your best to make it a little bit better. It's a great trash carrier. This one is a discontinued model, but there's several out there that work just fine if, if you look. The tire carrier I like as well because I traveled for a long time with the, with the full size spare inside. It wouldn't fit up underneath. Once I've got this thing on here, it, it made the world so much better. It gave me room inside, it got all the dirty stuff out. It's great, it's worked really well. It's hooked to my, uh, my, my tow hitch, trailer hitch. It's not a whole bumper setup. Uh, I guess while we're here, my exhaust. That's one thing I did that, uh, that isn't really stock. I, uh, I put that on there, it's a two and a half inch exhaust, help it breathe a little better. It works well with the, uh, having a uh, cold air intake under the hood. And for the back, I guess that's about it. What do you say we look inside and see what's going on in there? Here we are at the back of the rig where I do all my, my cooking and eating, hiding from the rain. One thing when I'm cooking, I got the bear spray just in case they come around. I've got a power inverter in here for charging up odds and ends around camp. You know how they work. My drawer system here, I got it from the Goodwill. It stores everything I need in here pretty much. It's kind of compact and tight. It's got my uh, coffee stuff up in here. It comes in real handy. Just below that, I incorporated uh, a piece of plywood. It pulls out, it, it comes in so handy for making sandwiches and stuff on the trail. I've got my little sticker collection on top here. Moving over here, I got my fridge. It's not a real big one. It will, uh, it will freeze if I want it to or just refrigerate if I want it to. It doesn't do them both at the same time. It's a great improvement over a cooler, although I used one for years. They work great. I do enjoy having this. For the cooking part, I have this other table I slide out right here. It will come all the way out and legs will fold down like a card table, but I don't ever really do that. Once that comes out, out comes the camp stove. And, and just like that, once you hook up the propane, you're, you're cooking, cooking with gas. Another thing I recently added, just right here, is another little table I made. Having a table is really nice. A flat spot around camp is hard to come by. This was an old camp chair I used to use. I bought it for probably five or six bucks at a yard sale, and it fell apart where I sit. 
So I took this little table off the side and zip tied it to my tire carrier and it works great. Uh, the same thing store bought, they're well over a hundred dollars, I think. I don't know, they're more than I care to spend. But as far as things go back here, that's really about it. It doesn't take much more than that to, uh, to have a good camping trip and eat well. Okay, here we are checking out the back of my rig. It all started off with these two Thule bars here, these crossbars when I first bought it, but I soon found out that they weren't enough to carry all the gear I wanted to put up there. So I graduated to buying uh, another one to go across and accommodate uh, my gear uh, more forward on the vehicle. Having the weight up front is important. You don't want too much out back. I've got my shovel mounted up here for easy access with these uh, rubber grip things that I had in my shed. My Max tracks, I've got them padlocked down on this. They come in handy. They came in handy today, actually. The cargo thing, it, uh, it carries my cot, my bedding, any gear that I don't need to get to very often. It's just nicely stowed away up here. Other side is my tent. I think this is about it as far as putting gear up here and as far as the, the build goes. Um, these other parts you see that are uh, aluminum actually came out of an electrician's van. They were shelves. Took them apart, repurposed them to make it so I could tie things down a lot uh, more securely than I could before. I think that's about it for the top. Okay, here we are up front. Here's some of the gear I've got. I've got my phone and tablet both on uh, RAM mounts. They seem to work pretty good. I, I, I like them. I recently got a uh, satellite communicator. I've only had it for one day. I think it's going to come in handy. Hopefully I won't ever have to use it except for texting and communicating. It's also for like SOS when you're in danger. I've got a CB radio by Uniden and a GMRS radio by Midland. I don't use the CB hardly ever, but the Midland radio, it works great. I've just got a little magnetic antenna on, on the hood and uh, it comes in handy. It really does. You can use it with walkie talkies if you want and uh, the mic, it feels good and sturdy. As far as, uh, other things, I've got a little patch collection going up in here, which is pretty standard for overlanding. I carry my camera and a little backpack up front here. Other little odds and ends for snacks and stuff when I'm out on the trail. And that's about it as far as the, the cockpit goes. And there you have it. My 97 Toyota 4Runner walk around in a nutshell. I hope you liked it. It's a beautiful day out here today, Phil. Thanks for bringing me out here. And if you all are so inclined to get yourself a rig and go out and explore, please remember to do your best to leave it better than you found it. Well, that wraps up another episode of the podcast. We leave you this week with footage from the Cascade Mountains along the Sauk River here in Washington State. We'll see you next week. I hope you like, share, and subscribe. And with that, I want everybody to stay safe, tread lightly, and hopefully I'll see you here or on a trail soon. You have been listening to Waypoint Overland's Random Waypoints. Like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more.